Okay, today I'm going to show you how to import data into Python, how to plot the data. Um, we're going to do a, a linear least squares fit uh, to fit parameters to a, to a function, um, for example, if it's experimental data, and also do some integrals uh, with numerical data or data sets. So the, the first thing you want to do, and there's many ways to do this, but uh, for example, we, we have this example data set. Um, and what we want to do is pull this into Python, so it's just some X, Y data, and uh, you know they're labeled, they're they're in columns, and so uh, this is a CSV, comma separated values. So the easiest thing to do is to have your your Python script you're going to evaluate in the same directory as your data. Okay, so you can just start a new, for example, text file and just and just rename it uh, .py. So so this is the script we're running. The the data is example data. So um, here's this script. We're using Spider. It's like a shell in Anaconda. Um, it's really nice. You'll see how we use it. But anyway, um, the first thing we want to do is import the libraries. Okay, so uh, the first important library is NumPy. <clears throat> we can import it with a different name. So import NumPy as np. We also want to import uh, the CSV library because this is how we're going to import the CSV file. Okay, so this little uh, hash mark will just comment out the line. Um, so these are just just comments, so it doesn't actually evaluate those lines. Uh, uh, for example, if, if it looks all grayed out. Okay, so to import the data, <clears throat> we're going to do something that looks like this. Okay, so we need to open the file into Python. Okay, so we're going to say um, <clears throat> with, and then we need to use the open function in Python. And then we need to say what we're going to open. So this is example data.csv. Uh, and then we're going to say uh, we're going to open it to uh, read. Okay. So we're going to open this data file and it's going to look in the directory that this script is in. So that's why we want it in the same directory. Um, you, can, you can change the, the working directory if you wanted. And we're going to open it as some variable i. Okay, so we're going to say with this file being opened to read um, as i, so it's going to import, open it as like a temporary variable i, what you want to do is uh, save the data. So the raw data is going to be basically, we're going to call CSV, and the function in the CSV library is reader, so this is how we're going to read the CSV file, and uh, the file we're going to read is i, right, because we've, we've used the Python built-in library to open this file and we've named it i so now we're going to say with with this function i or with this file i with a delimiter equal to a comma because this is uh, I was going to tell the difference between values it, it's comma separated values <clears throat> but another thing we want to do is we want to say how <clears throat> to save this so we want to save the raw data as a list okay because it's a list of data and so uh, we can run this and now you see in your variable explorer here, raw data is saved and it's a list, okay? And it tells you the index of these things. And uh, it's basically a one dimensional list. Um, and then you can go in for this uh, zero index. For example, we have the, um, X, the, the labels and each one of these has, has two indices for the, the two columns. Okay, so we have our data. The type is a list. And um, the next thing we wanna do is uh, convert this to something that we can do math on, okay? So we're going to do uh, example data, we'll call it. And we're going to say this is equal to a uh, NumPy array, so we're going to define it as a NumPy array. And we're going to say this is raw data, but we're only going to take uh, the second element on. So the, the indexing starts at zero, so if we say one, that's the second element in the list. And then we're going to say what kind of data type to make it. Um, we're going to make this a float. So we're going to say numpy float. And so it's going to save it as a floating value. Now look, index 0 is just the header. Index 1 is the actual data. So this is why we're starting at 1, and then we put the colon to show that you take 1 and then everything that follows after it. Okay. So this is what you see. This is the example data now. It's now a floating array of floating values, and it's... Um, two dimensions, okay, and uh, it doesn't save the header. So this is exactly what we want. This is a, a X data and Y data. Okay, so 
now we can separate the x data into b um, example data, and then we're just going to take the first column. So we're going to take all rows. So we put uh, the colon, so you can find all, comma, first column. And we can do the same thing with the y data. We're going to say that this is uh, all the rows, but the first or the second column. Okay, so now we can save these things as individual rows or individual columns. And um, the let's plot the data to make sure we've imported it, and this is what we want. Okay, so the uh, for plotting we want to import a new library, uh, import map plot lib. Uh, okay, this is a, a really useful plotting. We're going to refine it a little more. Uh, PyPlot inside matplotlib, so we're going to import that as plot. Uh, PLT this is a kind of a common notation. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to say let's call this plot we just imported, and let's name a figure, and we'll say let's call this one figure one, and I like to call the uh, higher resolution, so we'll say you know 120 dpi. Okay, now the easiest way to do this is just to say plot um, the function, and then you would import your x data, your y data, and then I like to add a label. And the label will say this is the experimental data. Okay, and so you can evaluate this, and now nothing happens except Spider has this great little um, feature here. You can click on the plots window, and this is the data. Okay, so this is exactly the raw data we imported. It just plots everything. Um, I'll show you some cool things you can do with plot just to make it easier. So we can add a title. So we can do plot title and we can say this is going to be example data so this is a cool way so look now you can run it it adds a nice data or, or um, and you can refine the text and everything but you can look in the matplotlib to figure out how to do this I also like to add labels for the axes so we can use these plots so for example x label now in our data set we already have x labels so in this raw data look the labels for the columns were the header of the uh, imported data. So all you need to do is you need to call the raw data. Let's say index zero has the headers, and index zero zero is the x data. Index zero one is the y data header. And so let's do that. Let's just call them directly. So we don't. And so and if you look at these, look, these are strings: x data, string y data, and string is what you want to input for labels. So these are already set up to be used directly. So we're going to say um raw data and then index zero and then index zero for the x label and then we'll say raw data and then for the y label we'll say zero one okay so this is going to automatically put these in um plot labels directly from our experimental data and we just have these carrots to show that it's you know meters squared or nanometers to the minus one but if you wanted to, Python is able to uh, use LaTeX type um, notation. You know, you would, you can look it up uh, for matplotlib how to how to make subscripts and fractions. But you can add LaTeX uh, um, code to to have it automatically put that as a subscript or, or a minor script. So anyway, it's not critical here. You can also do uh, plot uh, limits. Okay, so we'll say you want to do x from zero to three. And you wanted to do uh, your y limit from zero to two, okay? So that's totally fine too. Oh, um, I put a little. So look, when I when I misspelled this error here, when you run it in the shell, it shows you. You know, there's no such attribute as ym. That's because I forgot to do y limit. So this uh, console will tell you everything that's going on. Okay, so now we've got it. You can restrict the plot. Um, we don't need that, so if you want little features to take away, just put a little hash mark in front of them. It'll comment out that line, so it'll take away. Another useful thing for plotting data is um, the Y scale, for example. Uh, the default is linear, but you can plot it on a log scale if you wanted. So uh, here we can plot log uh, the Y values on a log scale. Um, but the default, if you don't put anything, is linear, or you could directly say it's linear. So you can do x scale and y scale as log or linear. Um, 
So these are just nice features to have. So I like to put all of these things in because you can just copy this directly and use it over and over again in all your code. It's just super easy. Um, so that's how we plot the data. Okay, so now we've got this experimental data set and uh, we want to now fit this data to a function. Okay, so let's define the function. Okay, so the function we want to define is, uh, we would say define, D-E-F, and then let's, let's label the function. Okay, so we're gonna label this function. Um, I'm gonna move me over here. And we're gonna label it, uh, we'll just call it func. Okay, and we have the x variable and then any arguments. Okay, so let's put one argument. This is the parameter we want to fit with like b. So these are inputs. And then we put a colon and then look, anytime it's indented, this is going to be within this function. So for example, with raw data was indented. So everything um, inside this is going to pertain to the width. And uh, the function, it's indented, meaning everything we define that's, that's integrated here until we type return is going to be defining the function. So you could do um, all sorts of things. You could do a plus b, uh, you know, c equals a plus b, and then we want to uh, return c, and this will output c, but you can have it do a bunch of math in between and then output something. Or you could have it output two things, c and a, and it'll give you two variables, okay? Um, but what we're going to do is just have it define one thing. So we're going to have it return, and uh, we'll do a simple function. Um, We'll do uh, a0 times exponential. So for exponential, you can do numpy.exp. And uh, it'll be minus b times x. So this is a simple exponential function plus a1. OK, so let's say we have this function, and b is the parameter. And a0 and a1 are known constants, OK? Um, so you also want to define any constants. Usually, we're working with things like, you know, Planck's law, or uh, you have you know Boltzmann constant or something, which is fixed, so you don't really need it as a parameter. Um, so let's say you had that case, you can just define those externally because they're always they, they don't change. So we'll say a naught was 2.5. In this case, the units have to be watts, meters to the minus two, nanometers to the minus one. When I write down and I define constants, I always like to note the units. Okay, and you should actually always write here what your inputs are. So what units and output are, are is this in? So we want to input x in nanometers and b in nanometers to the minus one. Okay, And this is going to output uh, watts per meter squared nanometer. Okay, And this will be output is going to be watts meters squared uh, nanometers to the minus one. Okay. So then we keep track of all of our units this way. So we'll define A0 and A1. Oops, sorry. And uh, we'll say this is 0 0.5. Okay, so now we want, uh, we've got our function. Let's, let's plot the function. So we can just add it to the same plot. And so without defining a new plot figure, um, we can, if we just type this plot function again, it'll just add it to the existing plot. And so the x data, let's, uh, well, first we need, to, we need to generate our data, okay? So we need to say the um, function data equals, so let's say the function, and it tells us we need to evaluate it at x and b. So the x values to evaluate it at is x data. Let's just evaluate it at the x data points that are in the example data set. So it'll just import, it'll just evaluate it at, uh, at each one of the points in this array. And let's just pick a value for b, we'll say 2. Um, we don't know what b is right now. You can also, if you didn't want, if you didn't have a data set of x, you can generate a data set. So you can do numpy uh, uh, a range, you know, something like this. And then you could type, and then it'll, it'll generate an array. Or you could type uh, lin space. And this will help, this will um, generate uh, an array. You can look up how to use these functions. But we already have an x data set, so this is fine. So um, this is our data. We evaluated at the x data points, so let's add it to the plot. So we have x data, y data. I'm sorry, the y data is going to be uh, function data. And then let's add a label to this. It's going to be our uh, model. And then since we're going to add to the same plot, it's nice to add a legend. Um, so we'll add a legend, and let's, let's plot this and see what it looks like. 
So here you go. It just adds it to the same figure, and then we've got a label now that says this is the model, this is the experimental data. Um, we can change it, this value, let's see if B equals 0 0.5. It looks maybe something like this. So this is the parameter we want to fit. What is B, okay? And so let's do a curve fit to the data, okay? So to do a curve fit, we want to import a new library here to do the curve fitting. And this is um, SciPy, okay? So from SciPy has all sorts of great mathematical, uh, scientific computing package, it says right here. So from SciPy, we want to import, um, okay, we actually we'll, we'll refine it from SciPy optimize. Okay, so this is a specific library in SciPy. We want to import um, curve fit. Okay, so this is a curve fit function. You can Google SciPy curve fit to get all the details, but I'll show you how to do a basic one here. Um, but the idea is it, it gives you two outputs. Okay, and so we have curve fit and we want to do curve fit of our function. And what it's going to do, it's going to curve fit the function. We'll say, here's the x data we're going to fit. Here's the y data we're going to fit. And we're going to, we need to put some bounds on the uh, fit. So the bounds are going to be, um, let's fit it if you look at this plot between 0 and 4. OK, so we're going to 0 to 4. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to take the function. It'll treat this first uh, argument as a variable. So, that, so it's going to fit for this first argument uh, with the x data. And then it's going to uh, take all the preceding um, values as parameters to fit. Okay, We only have one parameter, b, so it'll just fit b. You could have had a0 be one of the parameters, and it would fit b and a0. Um, but here we're just fitting for one parameter. Um, and uh, yeah, essentially, we want to do curve fit, and now we want to save it. So. Um, it outputs, curve fit outputs two things. So it outputs the optimized parameter, so we'll call it P optimize, as well as the um, covariance matrix for the uh, for the fit. So this tells us about the error. So we'll say P covariance, okay? So if, it, if, if a function outputs two things, you can just define both of those things with one line by just putting a comma between them, just as if we had this function return two things. What if it returned this value and this value? Then we could, uh, you know, just say uh, the outputs are equal to, to two, two variables. So our function outputs one thing. This function outputs two. So let's define both of them. Look, when we're plotting, if you want to work with errors, um, errors are just going to be the square root of the diagonal of the covariance matrix. Okay, so this is a good way to estimate error. So for the square root, we'll do NP SQRT. That's that square root. Um, using the NumPy library, and then it's going to be the diagonal. So you can do diagonals of matrix with NumPy, uh, diagonal, and this is going to be of p covariance. Okay. Um, so this let me make sure it's right p covariance. Okay. So this is going to be how we're going to do the fit. So let's evaluate this, and everything's done. It finished evaluating, and um, we can now look. Where is P optimized in our variables? P optimized is right here, 1.375. And their error is 0 0.07, okay, or 0 0.08. So this is how you do a fit. And if you had more than one parameter in your function, it would give you a list of, of variables here and a matrix for your covariance instead of just a value. So very easy way to do fits. So let's check this fit. 1.375 is our optimized parameter. So we're going to go back and let's plot it. Let's evaluate this function now at 1.375. Uh, so let's come back to the plot. Let's evaluate this. And boom, this is the fit. Um, you can do cool things by adding you know, bounds on the error and, and show rate regions for the error. Um, but this is just a basic example. Um, and the fit looks pretty good, and we know the error. So uh, the last thing we want to do to work with an experimental data set is maybe do some numerical integration. And so to do numerical integration, uh, we want to import another library. And so this is going to be uh, from scipy uh, dot integrate. Uh, we want to import. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's from scipy. Uh, let's just from scipy. Let's import the whole integrate library. Let's import integrate. Okay. 
and let's import it as INTG. So all we need to do to call the integration library is just type INTG. So um, basically we can come down here and now do some integrals. So let's say the, uh, I'm gonna try to get some space here. Okay, so let's say that the uh, total integral is equal to, we'll call it integral. And now let's do an integral over a numerical data set. So let's do it over the experimental data. So for this, um, a good one is, uh, yeah, traps, okay? So this is gonna be the trapezoidal rule. It's an integral using trapezoidal rule. There's a bunch of different ones you can use. This is an easy one. Um, and then we can give it the Y data and then give it the X data. And so it's gonna do numerical integral over the experimental data set, okay? And so let's look. Total integral is gonna be this, 3.785, okay? Now, what if you want to do an integral over the function? So let's say total integral of the function. Here we can do the same thing, but we're going to use a, a different um, function in the integrating library, we'll do quad. So for quad, um, we is basically going to, uh, uh, to, yeah, to compute, it's from quad pack from Fortran, but it's going to compute a definite integral. <clears throat> and so we do quad and then you pass it the function and then the x data and the y data, I'm sorry, the x data, and uh, no, that's not where the function, I'm sorry, and uh, what what bounds you want to uh, integrate over. Okay, so you give the function, we'll say we'll integrate from 0 to 4, um, and the function, so what it's going to do is the same thing, it's going to take this function and integrate it over this first variable x from 0 to 4, but we have all these parameters, in this case we have one parameter b, so we need to say what these arguments are for the parameters. So the you just type uh, the arguments equal, and then you give a list for what to evaluate for these arguments. So we're going to say B is going to be 1.375, right? And if we had multiple parameters, we would just list them here as an array. So, you know, come up with 0 0.5. Anyway, um, and so this is how you do the integral over a function. And so total integrating integral of the function is, look, this. It's a tuple. And uh, the value is 3.8, very close to the numerical integral, um, you know, the 0.03 difference. But it's, a, it's a, um, a two element array, so this also outputs the error. And look, the error is extremely low. Right now, we don't care about the error, so we just care about the first element. So for example, you want to take the first element of this, you can just type zero at the end, it'll take the first element of this array. Um, now look, here's our integrals. Another thing you could do is uh, integrate over a, a range. So what if you wanted to know the integral from 0 to 2, and then the integral from 0 to 4, you just do this. So say this is the integral low, and this is the integral high. And so you can compare integrals over, over different integrating regions. I'm sorry, and it tells you here, you know, here's our low integral, our high integral. Um, and we can look at the ratio of the two. So let's say, what if the ratio is going to be um, ooh, sorry, it's going to be the ratio of the, the low integral from 0 to 2 um, by the high integral from 0 to 1, okay? And you see, uh, where's your ratio pops up? It's like 0 0.7, okay? So it's saying like 70% of it is, you know, from 0 to 2. Um, anyway, if you keep track of units, it's very easy to, 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 you know, you should write what the output here is for the total integral, right? So, for example, this, uh, the function is in watts per meter squared nanometer. And we're integrating over um, nanometers. Okay, so the output here is going to be watts per meter squared. And so this is a power density, for example. And that's how you do it. So this is how you import data, plot the data very easily. Um, you can use this for experimental data. You want to fit it to a curve and do some numer uh, numerical integrals or integrating over integrals over functions. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed.